So, okay, so this is what we're going to be doing today, you guys. I am in love with this banding, and I don't know um, why well, I didn't know this stuff came in plastic before, because I love plastic. You know, I do a whole thing with single-use plastics and stuff like that. But just look at this. So, and, and then of course I'm like, let's let's get the really wacky colors. And this is this is the one millimeter, but it's that you know how the crystals have that goofy numbering. This is an SS13. And then of course all the crystals. This one is simply the the crystal color, right? Clear crystal. But then the lemon, the lemon 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 has the AB, and so maybe you can see that flash in there. It's a little bit of a rainbow flash. So AB, for those of you who don't know, stands for Aurora Borealis. So you have this clear, clear, and then you have, you can kind of see it. I'm pretty impressed with all the different colors that are on it. So this is the yellow plastic casing. Love, 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 love. But, so we're going to do a little bit different thing today. I'm going to be showing you how to do this. Hi, Danielle. Hello, my love. I'm having technical difficulties. Not happy? We're making the best of it. Um, but also, so I got these, you guys, Danielle also works uh, uh, as a content creator for John B. She's fabulous with her stitching, um, which I think would make a good pair because you would not get anything wonderful like that from me. I'm your wire girl. Okay, so here's some black, okay? And then we have both um, the SS, let's take a look. They're all one millimeter, which, which freaked me out at first. But the size is really, size of the crystal is really that SS number. So this is the SS8 is the small one, and the SS13 is the bigger one. Of course, I'm always about the bigger one, right? Now, look at this lovely, lovely, lovely thing here. Okay, so this is gold. It's plastic, you guys, but it's gold casing, you know, more like a metallic color. I mean, you could... It looks like metal to me, but it's plastic. Um, so the same thing. We've got the SS13, the bigger ones, and then this one is the SS8. Um, Those uh, links <laughs> put up there, you're going to get everything from there. You're going to see on there, too, that there's just, like, little packs like this. But then if you are, like, in love with this stuff the way I am, then you are probably going to want to get the bigger one. And it looks like, you know, like when you get um, trim from your fabric store, your favorite fabric store, big things. You might need that. <laughs> oh, you were just bragging about my video skills. Well, here's this is not the one to check out right here because we were getting so much reverb. And I tried to, but yeah. Okay. So, mwah. Anyway, so um, this is what we're going to do. What I need to tell you is that, uh, what I was just telling you, is that whenever we do a pattern, my assistant Sarah and I, we do two versions. This is the jig. This is the jig version. See the jig in the background? But then what we do is basically drop that jig out for you guys, and then you can just put this down, and you can just use that to make your, um, to just use as a pattern, you know, keep it around that. If you have things at home, like my mandrels here, so this is the one and we're going to be using the one and a half. It's, it's just that shape. Maybe this is your spice bottle. Maybe it's some other jar that you have at home. I don't know. Here's another one inch. So this is these are the diameters that we're going to be working with today. And of course, you can, you know, I mean, you don't have to have the exact, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, like I'm wearing these, these exact things. But if you if you're a person that likes these instructions, these are all available from John Bede, okay, for free. Um, today, we're not going to show you how to do these basic ear wires. We're going to do that next week just to tempt you and tease you and get you going because we're going to do that. And that's when we're going to show you this fabulous ear, this fabulous ear in here with these crystal rondelles and these jet bicones. My crystal muse is coming back. <laughs> okay, so anyway, all you need right here to do it if you uh, if you want to make these earrings. And this also comes with 
see how wordy I can get? You guys are like, yeah, just get along with, on with it. But this is these are the words written down. Okay. So let's see if I can. I'm gonna put this this way. You can see all the all the the stuff that you're not supposed to see. Ooh, look at that. This might even work. I'm not gonna be able to like really. <laughs> this is craziness. See that this is all the behind the scenes stuff, but this is what you get when you can't get all of your um, stuff going on. You know what? Let's do this. Let's show this instead of all that gross stuff. Okay. So we're going to move this over here for now. And we're just going to do it this way. So if I don't, if I'm not seeing your comments, you guys forgive me because we had to, we had to go a little different way today, right? Okay. So here's what we're going to do is we're always going to be using this pattern here. And I think, why don't I show it to you this way? I'll, I'll, I'll go upside down because it doesn't matter to me so that you can see what you're doing. Basically, we need to make one of each of these sizes. OK, and you can see here that this is kind of what we do, uh, what I do, because I do a lot of cold, cold showing you how to do cold connections, that this is <laughs> it's cool to see the studio, Debbie, um, when it's clean, maybe. Yeah, mine is hardly ever that. The other direction is pretty clean. So I thought what I do is I pre-made a couple of these, okay, and I thought, you know what, what else will go with this fun teal color is going with some of this. Now, this is aluminum. I also gave the link to the 18 gauge only uh, up top, so be sure to, care, um, to check that out. But we're also going to be showing you here, let's put these, I don't know, let's put them off to the side so we can go, get going. And right down here on this, as always, I have the links for you. This, uh, pay no attention to this right now unless you wanted to. I always put, like, not always, but I put a jump ring set up in here in case you didn't like the way I was doing it with the, um, with the Irish wax linen. But I thought I always like to add a lot of different mediums to my work. So, and you're watching me, so you get to have my ideas. <laughs> All right. So right here, it tells me if I'm going to be making this large focal uh, right here that I need eight inch length. And I know that I always give you a lot for that. Too much, as a matter of fact. So we're going to just lop off like eight inches. That's going to be way too much. But, um, but that's OK. I'll show you how to I'll show you how to figure that out when you get to that point. OK, so here we go. We've got the eight, eight inches right here. I'm going to take these wonderful, by the way, a wonderful shaker at, um, he's our, our tech guy. One of the tech guys at John Bede is, is making me some links on Amazon for these tools so you guys can get them too. Otherwise, if there's anything that you guys don't have uh, or you want to know about things that I'm using, just, just email info at johnbede.com uh, and you will... You will be happy you did. They will help you. Okay. So I'm just going to straighten this guy out here. All these, this isn't John Bead Pro, but all of these shaped right here are John Bead Pro. Okay. I happen to have this mandrel. If you don't, you can just, you know, just form this onto this pattern all by yourself. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this because I have it. And that's going to be a little short on that side. So I'm just going to do this and bring it up here. I'm also can see it's so buttery soft that I'm just shaping it with my fingers as I go. And I can grab that beautiful. These are great, aren't they? You guys, if they get a little scraggly, though, be sure to change the tips because you can really hurt your wire, too, if you have the wrong tips. So, so that you can see this, I'm going to take this out now and I'm just going to crisscross these on this pattern right here. Maybe you, a few of you have gotten it beforehand. You can see that it looks like there's a little tiny triangle that crosses, but that's just because when you form this, what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to mark that with my chain nose. And at that point, I'm going to make a little crisp edge okay this is just because it's the way that it looks on the 
for the jig one. Right here. I'm going to make another thing here. That's so I've basically gotten the markings, right? Okay. And I know that I have about um, three eighths of an inch is how long it is uh, the measurement that it takes me to make a nice plain loop. Right here, if it's bigger, sometimes I will do like a half inch. But that's how this is going to go right here. Okay. Grab this, and I'm going to just rock that loop right in there. I'm feeling for this, so I know that I've got it right at the end. And I'm going to go loop and another loop. That one was too small, right? So all you're going to do is you're going to link it back, go up further, a little further until you get the perfect size in there. Okay. Probably the lighting is not going to be great either. So let's grab that and just do that. Okay, that one was too big. <laughs> I'm doing all kinds of good stuff for you. Okay. And yeah. it's all right. Don't don't uh, you know? Don't worry about having to redo things. Go back. Um, this this wire is really um, pretty. Uh, pretty fragile, but you'd be surprised. Okay, so I'm just going to go back here, and I want what I want these to do is sort of overlap. Give them a little bit of memory. So this is basically making this one. You're going to make this one just the same way. So you make two. Uh, when I did these, you can see that basically I used um, some contrasting colors. I did the larger one um, in, in the teal here are the turquoise and then the larger one in the lemon here and then flip flopped them. So basically I've got two different earrings, but you know, I've kind of, I've kind of made uh, alternating ones as well. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my bench block up here. Again, you can get this at John bead. Um, and I'm just going to use, I love this, the size of this guy, this little one. This is a metal complex, you guys. Um, nylon hammer, and it's got two different ones. I'm not sure what the difference is. They both work about the same to me. And I'm just going to get this all flattened out so it's going to lay nice and flat. Wire is like hard string, right? <laughs> So you got to tell it what to do. That's a new one. Wire is like hard string. You guys can quote me on that. And you can kind of see what I'm doing here is I'm just holding these side by side right now. And then when I want to really get that shape in there, that, that overlapping shape, I'll do that at the end because I want everything on the same plane first. But, but now I want it to remember this shaping here. So that's pretty darn good. Let me come back up and see if you guys have any questions. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> that was kind of weird, right? Um, I am, Janelda, I am using the 18 gauge uh, aluminum. So it only comes in the two, uh, the two gauges and it's the 18 is the thinner gauge um, that I'm using today. You could, you could make some bulkier ones with this 12 gauge. I mean, you, you're not going to want that to go through, you know, through your ears, but it's, um, it's, uh, it's, gorgeous <laughs> it's beautiful you can use it for a lot it's amazing to me how I've gone from using like five or six different gauges in steel and really it sometimes you can you can be more creative when you just have limited um, resources right so um, so let's kind of go back right now I'm going to show you how to start adding the stuff and it's just going to take you every once in a while. I'm going to ask you to get out the darning needle, right? And I put that skew number on the instructions as well. 
uh, but you guys probably all have darning needles in your stashes too. I can see that this side is open a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. Color aluminum. Yep. Yes, aluminum. Now, you guys know, because you're smart cookies, that I'm just suggesting this wire to you. If you have copper, use copper. If you have, if you're a silver person, use silver. Um, I'm in love with aluminum at this moment, and so that's what we're using. Probably go back to steel at some point. Okay, so this is not going to be uh, brain surgery, but there are a few little tricks about it. So what I did is I cut off a little piece of this. This one's six and a quarter of inches because I know that's what it takes to go around this, this bigger one. Okay. But what I'm going to do is for time's sake and, and to show you another alternative, we're going to go through around the smaller one, which means now I have to close the smaller loops as well. I've noticed I'm more creative with the less choice beads I have now. <laughs> right. Not that, not that you would say, Danielle, that you need less. We would never. Notice how I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> okay. So I'm closing these loops up. Close them up. We don't want things going back up in there. And you know what? It just looks prettier when, uh, when we don't have it. Okay. So we're going to put this to the side. I'm going to put this to the side. This show might go a little bit over an hour because we spent the first part of it just whining about tech. You know, what would a Brenda show be without some whining about tech? All right, let's get this. But I want to, um, let's, uh, let's see here. Okay, so, let's be this. Hi, Lena. Mwah. How are you going? Hope you guys are staying warm. Oh. How are our Texas people? You guys, I feel so guilty here. It's, it's in the high 60s and the 70s here. Don't kill me, though. Okay, let's go back down here. Remember, I can't see you at this point. Okay, so I'm going to just, um, I think I need it, like I, I, I said, two, two feet. So we're just going to do more than we have. So obviously, because we're going down a little bit for, um a little bit more in size. We don't, we're not going to need that much, but I, I'm a big believer in, I don't want to have not enough. Right. Okay. So where does that go? Oh, here it is. All right. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to start anywhere on one side. Okay. I'm going to put, I'm just going to hold this here. And what I'm going to do, well, before I hold that here, let's actually thread the needle, which it's a darning needle, so, you know, that's that's easy stuff. Danielle has to thread smaller needles than me. <laughs> okay, so I just have this. Generally, I don't use a needle when I'm working with Irish wax linen, you guys. I love this stuff. Um, since John B. doesn't carry it, I can tell you th to get this at Royal Wood Limited. Or, you know what? Um, Heather Powers is starting to carry it, and this is a four-ply, just so you know. They have the most colors in four-ply, so I think I have almost all the colors. So how I'm going to start this is anywhere on this, I'm just going to go, I'm going to go up from the back, and I'm going to come to the front, and I'm sort of holding this all together. Sorry, this isn't the best. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around... So I'm trapping the earring in the middle, and I'm going to go up through that same hole. No, I'm going to go down through the same hole, I think. Uh, no, that would take it up. Okay, starting is always the hardest part, right? So we're just going to, we're going to go up through the same hole from the back. Okay. But you can just see I'm leaving myself like a six-foot tail. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back, right? And I'm going to thread the other end, the longer end of the Irish wax linen onto. There we go. Look at that. I can even do it while I'm holding on to stuff. 
So this isn't not hard at all. The, the hardest thing you guys is to keep everything else out of your out of your way because you, you know that how this goes. Things are going to try to get in here that aren't um, don't need to be in here. So what I'm doing and I might do this wrong because I get myself mixed up is that you can kind of see here what I'm doing is I've, I'm coming down from one side. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to have the thread encase this, and I'm going to come back up through the cup, the chain, the banding from the other side. I don't know if you can see that very well or not, but if so, and I'm just going to take up that slack. So that's my first stitch. And if you can kind of see there, I don't know how well you can see, is I'm, I'm starting to make a little zigzag. And as long as, and, and so I'm starting anywhere on this, and I can push that back up to where it's supposed to be at any point. Pay no attention to this other smaller uh, tail. But I'm just going to keep doing that, and it helps if I flip it back and forth because then I'm making the same motion, and I don't have to flip it in my head. So at this point, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Whoopies. Uh, is I'm going to go around and up, and I'm going to go into to the next one, and then that's going to can that is going to finish that zigzag on this side. And see, it wanted to go around my finger. It wants to go around everything possible. Okay, I'm going to come back up because I don't know if you're if you're able to get this. Okay, just got electricity, so I was afraid that I'd have to miss you live today. <laughs> Well, that would be the worst thing ever, missing my life. And uh, maybe 26 wire from your wire stash. Yep. Yep. 26. I've even used 28. You know, whatever. So can you see this? Let's see how close we can get. We're getting hard to see. You can see a little bit. So it's starting to go zigzaggy. Hi, Terry. No, it's not. It's Crystal Banding by Preciosa. It's amazing stuff. Okay. So, okay, so that's the, I'm like, what happened? So now I'm going to flip it again, and I'm going to keep going. And we're going to have another conversation here because um, it's going to take me a while to get around this, right? Yeah, very cute. I did it right, you guys. So cool. I like did a whole earring yesterday. So I'm like, I, you know, I did this, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, to teach it. And of course, writing the instructions that'll, that'll cement things in your brain. Okay. So, but uh, I will say that do, do keep just like switching it back and forth. And every once in a while, I'd be like, oh, I mutilated my wire. Um, which I think I forgot to to harden this one, um, but it won't be mutilated as much as you think. How's that for a confidence builder? It'll just be mutilated a little bit. <laughs> okay, but already, like I'm almost halfway there. Well, I'm a third of the way there. But just keep flipping it, you guys. Make one stitch on the other side. All again you're doing is you're going under and around that wire, and you're coming back up the next hole. That's all you're doing. And it looks so cute, and I like to, and of course, okay, so here it's going around that. So just be patient. Pull it back out. It wants to go around everything that it's possible that it's not supposed to go around. So this is sort of my, my denim look, right? And I love doing this part in contrasting colors, A, because you guys can see it better, what's actually going on. So if you're doing black on black, God bless you. But <laughs> you might want to start, you might not want to start with black on black, just saying. Um, but um, yeah, so I think I said A and like leading you to believe there was a B. Can't remember what that was now. <laughs> I just love being with you guys. <laughs> I hope you find as much humor in it as I do. Oh, uh, you know, you can't 
So yeah, so later on I'll be finding out like, okay, you guys, and we use our um, our bead extravaganza people. Okay, so that time I was supposed to go around um, for our tech help, and that. So I was on the group chat. I'm like, I can't get this thing to go horizontal. What do you guys? What am I doing? So they've talked me through this. Now I'm gonna have to say, what did I do wrong this time that I didn't do wrong the other three times? Aw, I know it does, doesn't it? Yeah, so this the trick to this, you guys, is just to keep flipping it. When I first started doing that, I'm like, oh, I'm just, and, and honestly, maybe you guys, you, you probably do have better brains than I do, but I was just like, you know what? If you just keep flipping it, you're just doing one stitch, um, and you really don't have to worry about... Um, but you know, having to transpose things in your in your brain. Danielle and I were just talking about that yesterday because we were like, I was like, you know what? I was all down on myself. I was like, because my memory and stuff. Um, I was like, what is wrong with me? But I think it's just, I mean, look at just the passwords we have to remember. Just the passwords. Good God. Oh, we never <laughs> we never had to do that before you know what I mean well some of you guys are young well okay anyway so when I talk about how things are maybe a little bit mutilated this is really more of a, a you here and see how I just pushed it back and it's just stayed there it just it just wants to test us as we're going along okay the other thing about taking a stitch let me see if this theory is right is that I think so we're going that way yeah you are going to be going different directions but basically you're doing the same thing over and over and over again four ply yep <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. I'll pay you $20 later. <laughs> uh, okay. That's interesting. I've, I've started to do a whole different thing here. No, that's right. Soon as I start doubting myself because it looked different, but I think it's still right. Here, this might help, right? See how far I've gotten? And so I probably didn't talk to, talk to you before about this, but what I want to show you is that, you know, you can do this like on the outside or you can bring it all to the front or the back or, or even to the inside, right? Depending on what you, how you want your earrings. Um, but, but this way, you can do what you want with it. Now, what I will tell you is that to go around the outside, you're going to need a little bit more, a few more, like one or two more crystals than you are on the inside. And that's in the instructions as well. Um, but to go face front, they're compacted in, so you need one or two less. Just saying. And you can see already, so I cut this one for the long one, and I'm not going to need all those. So let's go around and through, up through the orange. It's rhinestone banding. That's what it is. In love. I can't wait to use some of these other colors. Ooh. Don't you wish you had like so much more time okay so I'm just we're almost done here guys so glad I thought hey just do the smaller hoop so they're not waiting for you even though I love talking to you okay one more I think I fit another one yeah just one more on there and we're gonna come up through this and I'm gonna show you how to um, <laughs> course so basically what I'm doing here is right 
going around and coming back up the next one. Okay, then I've got all this extra stuff, which I can do all kinds of other things with. And I'm just going to get in here and I'm going to cut that off. It'll have like a little ladder effect. And so just cut, so just trim those off. Obviously, you're going to need to trim. So I'm coming through this, this hole right here. You're going to want to trim up to that one. And it's kind of obvious, but it's a type of thing that I would be like, oh, okay, this is nothing to anchor it now. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, getting back in there with the back of the cutters. Beautiful. So there we go. Super cute. We're going to go on the outside of this. But here you say, okay, so now let's get rid of this guy on here. And I'm just going to cut. I shouldn't have done that quite yet. About six inches. Put my cutter away. It is kind of it is kind of mesmerizing. Okay. Now on on this one, guys, what I do, what I tell you is that for this one, which is the smaller one, we we'll just I just leave it plain, and then what I do is I have you um, twist these guys back and forth, which I will which I will do here. But first, I, I want to finish this and show you how to actually finish this part of it. Okay, so just because I'm only coming through one side of this, I want to attach both sides. And so I'm going around this one in a straight stitch across the back. So we've been doing the zigzag. I'm doing a straight stitch, and I'm just going to come right back out the front again. Put that stitch underneath. Come on. <laughs> All right. So you can kind of see it on the back there. So one straight and the other. That's a pretty good shot. The other one is zigzagged. Okay. And um, I started out the way I started it. That the first one is like that already. So here we have, you know, two ends that are ready to go. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to make these loops right now. They're parallel to the earring itself. And what I want to do is make them perpendicular. So I'm going to change the orientation from this to this. And I would give you a degree, but <laughs> that would make me think in numbers, which just doesn't work too well. Okay. Going to kind of hold this and I'm going to not hold it with that. I'm going to hold it with my fingers. So I'm changing that degree, right? So this one's still flat and this one is perpendicular. I'm going to do the same thing to this one, but make sure that the openings are the same direction. So what I need to do is I need to take this one and I'm going to hold the rest of it and then change the direction. You can also just kind of give yourself a little bit of tweak there so everything's going upright. You're going to kind of coming from an angle and you want upright so that these are going to clap together nicely. Okay. And of course, it's going to be like giving you a little problemos. So, so now this one will come up to here. First thing I'm going to do, thinking about this, because I'm doing it a little bit differently, so now I have to challenge myself for you guys, is that, let's go down, hopefully. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, not like the directions, I'm going to challenge myself here. Nope, I don't want to do that either, because that's too low. Is I'm going to come back up through each of the uh, each of the loops. I think I'm making this up, you guys. 
you know what? Okay. Take three. We're not going to do that because we still uh, want to um, attach these. Thanks for your patience, by the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of crisscross these and I'm going to open and close these so that they go, they fit into that. Now that's going to be quite the feat. There's a little bit of advanced work here, guys. I'm going to open both of these up. I'm going to pinch this closed. I'm going to get my ties out of the way. So this is the bigger one. And I'm going to go into both of them. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, that wasn't so hard. And then I'm going to close these up again before I do any tying together. Huh. This one we might need a jump ring for. I know what I did. Okay. I put it toward the top. See what I do to myself when I do this. So what I did was I attached it on this side instead of inside. So we're going to attach it on the right side. Oh my gosh. This. Okay. So I think I am going to have to go upside down, or I can just get a jump ring in there somehow. And uh, yeah, that might be the actual better way, way to do it since I've, I've changed all the rules here. So instead of doing the perpendicular, we're going to go back. This is actually how hardy this wire is actually <laughs> it's just like manipulating it back and forth. And it's, it's, uh, it's not doing too poorly for me. So let's just make a quick jump ring. Since we're changing all the rules today. I'm just going to chop off that end. And I'm going to make a small jump ring. I'm just going to bypass right on my right on my round nose pliers there. Sweet little jump ring. So I decided to hammer it and then I hammered it in a weird position. <laughs> okay. Rounding it back out. So let's open and close this one around these guys. Here's the smaller. And then let's see if I can get these guys here. I know Lena's here rooting for me. And we're going to go through the top one first. And then the bottom one. Or I should say the top and the bottom. Let me see here. How is that going? I got the bottom. I got the bottom ones in. And it's just a matter of getting everything aligned and in the right place. I think I've got it. Hold your breaths just one more second. There we go. 
I did it. Okay. So let's go back up here. All right. You guys are probably nervous for me, and I was nervous for myself there for a second. But what ended up happening is I did it because I did something a little bit different. I kind of created a little more of a challenge for myself. And so now I've got these together on the top, these together on the bottom, and then I've got a jump ring connecting everything in there. And now what I can do is I can go back in with this and create that little bow. So there's a lot, there's a lot going on there. <laughs> but as long as the orientation is fine with everything, um, it'll be fine. And so I think what I'm going to do now is just go back up through that central jump ring, going through from both sides. Thank you, Leanne. Um, and then I'm going to, so then, so then I have something, whenever you're going to tie something, right, you need something to anchor against. And so I am going to, like your shoe, right? So I'm going to go through this jump ring. If I can get through there, I could probably even use my needle. I'm just so used to not using a needle when I'm use, when I'm doing Irish wax linen. I'm going to go back through this other way. So I have Yeah. So I have something to to tie against. And see how I did that? So I kind of came up and went through. And I'm going to give it a tie here and see how that looks. I kind of like I'm kind of digging this little bow. <laughs> Dubs, you're cute. Yep, yeah, a few whacks of the hammer. I just whacked it in the wrong direction at first. <laughs> I whacked it. I whacked it so that it was uh, not doing the right thing. But you know, you guys are smart. So I just generally make this kind of big bow here. And then, you know, as long as you have the bow, you can kind of um, you can kind of make your your loops a little smaller and kind of set them in, you know, kind of cute, huh? And then you can just make your tails as long or as short as you want. Today we're going to do about like this. And I always like to give them a little bit of a twist just to kind of set them in. If you want, you can just do a little bit of a dab there of glue with this uh, GS Hypo. I like to use this with Irish wax on it because as soon as I get too confident and I cut that too small, Nothing is, and this stuff won't, um, you know, some glues are just going to make things look really sort of glossy and you're going to see that glue. This will just go right into that linen and so you won't see it. So next week, what we'll do is we'll show you how to make um, ear wires. And so we'll have these will be finished. I have to say they turned out pretty cute and they match my glasses. Um, so I'll have another uh, another pair of earrings, but we'll do a kind of an ear ear wire like this, or maybe we'll do a shorter one. You know, to me, shorter ones are so where is that so darn boring, but they're useful. You can't you can't always have long earrings, so I'll probably do oops like this one over here, the most useful ear wire. So yay. <laughs> I know it was touch and go for a while there, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. So thanks for hanging in there with me, you guys, though. So I think this turned out really cute. And this is, I'm glad I put that jump ring on there. Um, but it did. It's going to be awesome. So cute with jeans, you know. Or if you guys are like, I've been just buying these bright prints uh, lately and just really enjoying um, some color. I think it's because, you know, winter. It's not the same here, but... 
we're just coming into some seasons now where we're getting some some uh we will be getting some blooms on our cactuses and things like that thank you dubs so so these are peepers and i think because i'm wearing these to see close i decided dubs i am getting 10 more pair right <laughs> why not <laughs> It's a fashion statement. That's what I'm telling myself. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, this necklace is actually kind of a long one, but because of Zoom and everything, you guys can't see. Um, this for my birthday last year, which I was, um, so I broke my hip on April 7th, and my birthday's May 7th, so we went, um, and it was COVID. So we went up north to Globe, Arizona, and at, at this uh, antique shop, I got these little kids tea set silverware pieces that were never broken off of the you know this sort of molding here and i thought oh that is so cool so i got these uh fancy little fake eyes and some fancy little fake eyelashes and put them in there and then i beaded the necklace with um some perler beads <laughs> you know and i'm never gonna not be without silverware <laughs> So this is some of the stuff I'm doing with, this isn't single use plastic, but these are. So you can see that these are just like little caps. I got this off of some kombucha and then I got some charms and did a little resin work. Carmi's going to be like, oh, she's my resin girl too. Uh, and then I did these fun little, um, this, this I'm hoping to do as a, um, a fun uh, tutorial for you guys too. And it's basically just can you see how cute these are in the back? Got that little anchor. There we go. Um, and then I just drilled into the sides and just did these all. Um, I think I call this the pinhead. <laughs> yeah, this is the pinhead bezel. So, yes, they are little utensils. Hi, Sarah Shaha. I am one of a kind. Hey, Sarah, you need to do. Milano Jewelry Week. I think I'm going to do Milano Jewelry Week. You're probably doing all the weeks. Sarah is a fab. If you guys don't know Sarah, you have to look her up because she just does this beautiful work. And she works with found objects too, right, my love? Jingle bells. Iron jingle bells. So. <laughs> Masks are a little problematic at times. And I keep forgetting that I don't need to wear lipstick. Well, my masks have like lipstick stains on the inside. <laughs> Thank you, Leanne. Oh, it says Leanne, you're new. It says you're new. <laughs> Welcome, Miss New. <laughs> it's so good. To, where are you from? I do think so. I think so. Because maybe we'll come. I don't know. Jim and I were talking. It's like as much as we like to come, I just don't know if we're going to. And this is in June. Makes me sad. I don't know when I'm going to see you again, Sarah. <laughs> so, any of let's see, have I, uh, let me see, how am I going to do this? Have I missed any of your questions? Uh, la, da, 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 da. Yes, in all the colors. Yes, I love your necklace, forks, and spoons on there. Hey, yes. <laughs> so, what have I missed? Let's see. Those glasses look great on you. Your skies are so sweet. Uh, wax linen, yes, yes, yes. What else did I miss? <laughs> you, guys, uh, you guys are covering all the things. I love my polish. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, Deb, sorry. Hello, most of what you're doing is going beyond the bonus. We really love to see it, though. <laughs> Yep. Hopefully, hopefully I figured that out right. <gasps> Am I wearing a big ring? No, no. Um, I haven't been, but I have this case over there in my, um, in my. Uh, well, I mean, where have I been going, right? Um, to, uh, I have this case of all my famous artist friends, all my famous artist friends' work over there in the front of the studio and you're in there with Bob Evendorf and 
uh, Laura Anderson, and oh my gosh, um, everything's escaping me now, but all of my cherished, cherished works. Yes, I bought a beautiful ring from Sarah. <laughs> Uh, oh, no, no worries, Debs, you were right. <laughs> That's, I was just scrolling up to see if I had lost anything. So, okay, um, why can't you see what others are saying? Why can't you see what others are saying? Well, so Janelle, this is a good question because um, I'm simulcasting to nine different platforms. So you're not seeing what other people are seeing on their platforms, which is why if I, um, so here I'm going to sh sh show what Deb's, what you're saying is that you'd love to see Sarah's work. Where do you find it? So I can do this if I'm, if I'm on the ball uh, and I can, um, I can then poke at your comment and everyone can see it. So um, um, yes, so she says she's flattered. And that's her there, my lovely little girl. I just love my Sarah, a curly girl. Um, so, Sarah, where can we find you on Facebook? This is how you spell Sarah's name. It's S-H-A-H-A-K. Sarah's from Israel. And I wish I had a picture of here of things. Maybe we'll, we'll put a picture of your things up here later so that I can show them. And my branding, I can show, you know, different pictures. These are called overlays, but basically it's just showing you pictures of things. So, yeah, let's go back to comments. So that's my favorite screen. Yes. On Facebook. Sarah, do you have a website as well? Sarah's like in all the shows. She's how I, how did we meet? You met because you started watching the show. Oh, I got a frowny face up there. That was just a slip of the fingers. <laughs> or maybe, maybe because you couldn't see. Um, Oh, I almost admitted the age. So, um, so yeah, so uh, we met here, but then when I was still living in Wisconsin, I visited her. She was doing the one of a kind show in Chicago when shows were still happening. I think Sarah, you did like the one in 2019, I think, because I think that's when we moved. Um, yeah, in Chicago. So the four of us, the guys, and we went out for Italian in Chicago. That was yummy. Um, and so then I got into Athens Jewelry Week, and I was going to go there, and Liam ended up getting sick, so I couldn't go. So I'm very, very sad that I couldn't see Sarah and her husband again for that show. So I'm still, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. So, all right, you guys. Um, hey, Kara. Yes, an Italian restaurant. I can't remember the name of it now. Isn't that funny? Like, since I've moved, I cannot remember, like, a lot of the names of streets or places I used to go in Wisconsin. It's like there's only so much room up here, and Arizona had to take up part of it. All right. So next week, you guys, I, you know, I, I always procrastinate on saying goodbye to you because I just love this. But we're going to go over how to make these cute earring, earring wires. I love to do, like, a built-in ear wire. Um, for a certain look and base, so basically these are like a giant head pin, right? A decorative head pin. And so we're making this one and then I'll also show you how to do this other, this other one right here with this cute, cutest little like loop-de-loop -loop right there in the middle. Um, that'll serve some things and also we'll go over ear wires. I like to call it the anatomy of an earwire because there's earwires, they're utilitarian, right? They're a finding, so we have to have part that fits through the, the lobe. We have to have the part that is the, the lead that fits through the lobe, so that has to have like a jaunty angle. And then we have to have some room in here, and then we also have to have a knot anatomy of this part here that will hold your earring on. You can see this tiny little one right here, that tiny little one, but it's amazing what tiny little loops can fit. <laughs> you thought you were on, it's been going so long, it could be the replay, right, Kara? All right, you guys, um, so next time, hopefully we get, uh, we get the horizontal mode, and we also get uh, no echo, um, because uh, Kate showed me, I'll show you how, so Kate has this, this is on my top-down camera right here, and so she, she, uh, Kate Richburg is such a mentor to all of us live broadcasters, and she's also one of our 
our, our big presenters on um, the Great Beat Extravaganza. And so this is where my camera was before I threw it off. And <laughs> I didn't throw it off, but it's kind of like here. So this is your top down camera right here. So I don't know where the reverb was coming from, but learning as we go, right? Thank you, Janella. You're such a sweetheart. And I love hanging out with you guys. Mwah. Um, so until next week, you guys, and don't forget, there's another, um, let me see if I've got this branding up here. Another great, yeah, I don't have it up here. Great beat extravaganza coming up. Um, and this is going to be March 19, 2021. As usual, I'll take that last spot on the Sunday night so that you guys know where to find me and no desert walk this time. Um, but also, please do subscribe uh, today to my newsletter. The, that link to get to that um, is, let me see if I can actually get it here for you guys. And uh, let's see here. John B. Links, where's my landing page? Hold on, hold on. If I do a search here, landing page, here it goes. I'll put it in there so that you guys can, if you're not already, because there's a few new new friends here. Copy. Okay, we're gonna get rid of this one. And we're gonna get rid of that one. And we're gonna go in. Oops. Get rid of that one. Comments. Here is the registration area for for the go go go. Look at that. How fancy I am. I had to prove myself on my fanciness. <laughs> There we go. And look, it's even it's even working on all the different links of the, of the different um, platforms. All right, my loves. Okay. Mwah. I absolutely love you guys. You know that. Thanks for working your way through this. Just touch and go there. But we learned a few more things, right? You and me both. So I will see you. Mwah. Love having you here. Adios.